I believe the donation should be assessed from the perspective of Canada's relations with China in 2016 when it was made, not from the much more negative context which exists today. At that time, universities, corporations and governments were all attempting to strengthen ties with China, including Mr. Harper's government that signed a foreign investment protection agreement in 2014. From that perspective, this was seen as a normal and desirable donation consistent with the Foundation's priorities. Uh, Mr. Rosenberg, you claim that the source of the donation was the Millennium Golden Eagle International Canada, Inc., yet on July 14, 2016, when you sent international bank transfer instruction, instructions, nowhere mentioned in that letter is Millennium Golden Eagle International Canada, Inc. The only names on that letter were Ben and New. Why? I don't have the document, and I can't answer the question because I don't recall right now. You're highly suspicious. You claim, you claim, you claim, you signed it, highly, highly suspicious that on a document sent to transfer the money, that nowhere is that entity mentioned, just the names of those donors. Did you bother to even go on to the website of the, this company? So... As I've explained, the way receding was dealt with... Uh, I guess the answer to that is no, because if you had bothered... Mr. Cooper, it's a yes, no Mr. Question. Cooper, you do have to give him a chance to answer, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Receding was done um, by staff in uh, the foundation uh, in conjunction with our accountant. Um, and when I got a receipt to sign, I assumed that it was fine. Hopefully they knew how to use Google, because had they bothered to do so, had you bothered to do your due diligence, you would have known that the website of the Millennium Golden Eagle International states that as part of her mandate is to take governmental guidance from Beijing. If you had bothered to do your due diligence, you would have known that Zhang Bin was a political advisor to the Beijing regime. You, play, you came before this committee with a straight face as the former Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, and you said, there's nothing to see here in the face of that. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious, and I'll answer your question. Um, first of all, ben, Je, Zhang Bin was introduced to Mr. Lefebvre at the University of Montreal by our ambassador in China, uh, Mr. Guy Saint-Jacques, who I actually spoke to yesterday. Mr. Saint-Jacques was very well aware of the associations that Mr. Uh, Zhang had. Um, and I think it was felt that almost everybody in China who was anybody had some connection with the government. The question was, what were they and, trying and to this, influence? And this agreement began to crystallize with this individual associated with the United Front Work Department, with this shell company, with uh, that had a, an address that was a house in Dorval, that whereby it was insisted upon that as a condition the Prime Minister's brother uh, be involved, that all of this was happening one month before a federal election campaign? Well, and this... you didn't see anything to be concerned about, nothing at all to be, nothing, no red flag for you that would have said maybe we should look into this. Maybe we should do our due diligence. Maybe there's something here. Nothing at all. First of all, uh, these discussions started well bef in 2014. Um, and, long, and before I arrived at the foundation, long before the federal election uh, in, uh, in 2015, um, it, Mr. Lefebvre, who was negotiating this principal, principally, was advised by our ambassador in China that Mr. Zhang was a good person to talk to. And you know, at that time, there were lots of Canadian organizations that were dealing with Mr. Other Rosenberg, Chi there's one of two things that are possible. Either you are completely incompetent or you were, willf or you were willfully blind. There is nothing in your record to indicate that you were incompetent. The only con conclusion that I can draw is that you were willfully blind. I, I'm, I am gobsmacked beyond belief to listen to you 
in the role as president and CEO and a former deputy minister of foreign affairs to suggest you knew nothing about CSIS intercepting a very important call. You know CSIS reports to the government on any, any political interference whatsoever. You know that. Would you like me to answer? Yes. Okay. First of all, the first I ever heard of that was in an article that was published in the Globe and Mail on February 28th of 2023. No one believes you. Canadians don't believe you, sir. The one I want to go back to is uh, CSIS um, uncovering a Chinese plan to donate to the Trudeau Foundation. Um, this uh, appeared in the Globe on February 28th of this year. Um, it was based on an anonymous source, um, apparently not based on a document. This is intelligence. Intelligence is different than evidence. And I'm going to tell you something that some of you may have heard from uh, David Morrison when he appeared in, uh, at the other committee, the House committee. He said, uh, intelligence rarely paints a full or uh, concrete uh, or actionable picture. It's not truth. It's often inaccurate or partial or incomplete. And in fact, we don't know what happened to that intelligence. We don't know where it went. We don't know who was briefed on it. We don't know if anybody was briefed on it. We don't know if it was taken seriously or not. I wasn't briefed on it. Um, there is a question as to, and it's a policy question, as to how far CISA should go outside the government when they become aware of something that might affect, affect another non-government Canadian organization. And I understand there are limits on them with respect to revealing sources or methods but maybe they need to be a bit more proactive in uh, speaking and letting people know, and this is not just CSIS, but the whole security community, what is the public interaction of the transparency of the Canadian security community? I didn't know about this. I don't think anybody knew about this until February 28th. And to say that nobody believes me, you know, frankly, I'm insulted by that. Because at that time, we honestly believed that there, that, and this is going back to like Bill Clinton and bringing them into the WTO that only, if we only brought them into the international finance, uh, economic system, that they would over time become more democratic. We were wrong. We were wrong, but we believed that. And that's why, and that belief still existed in the 2010s. And that's why we operated that way. So I'm sorry, you know, Mr. Green, you know, you know doesn't, doesn't buy that, but I think we felt that we could do more good. We weren't being told what to do. But having conferences on climate change, on trade, even on human rights issues and other global issues would be a good thing and that some of the Chinese students who were at the University of Montreal who would attend those would be influenced by them. And the University of Montreal believed that the Chinese students, because they did have a Chinese students program, you know, being exposed to our way of life, to our rule of law, would, I guess by osmosis in a way, impact China. I don't think any of us saw the current regime coming, and it took a number of years for us to change our mind. You know, th the assumption that we were somehow nefariously trying to hide the real identity of the donor, the check came from this Millennium Golden Eagle Canada Inc. The receipt was made out to Millennium Golden Canada Inc. This is why I think there needs to be an independent investigation on this whole thing. Somebody not only needs to look at the documents, but needs to bring in the people at the Trudeau Foundation who were there at the time. And frankly, maybe somebody should go and speak to the company in Dorval. Maybe somebody should speak to the revenue agency about whether they thought there was anything untoward about this. We Thank had no malevolent intent. We uh, thought and believed strongly that we were complying with the law, sending the receipt to the person who made the donation. 